Hello, hello, hello. This is Charles with Exodus Dispatching and Training. I'd like to welcome you to Module 1 of the Freight Broker 101 Training for Beginners. Uh, module 1 speaks about, talks about customers and shippers. So if you're new to freight brokering, uh, the first thing you will want to establish is a customer or a shipper base so that you can get loads from them so that you can get approved carriers for those loads to start running those loads and booking those loads. So when you first start as a freight broker or an agent under a freight broker, um, your main focal point is number one, the shippers, and then number two, the carriers. And it can be vice versa, but uh, most people, they focus on getting the loads and then finding the carriers for those loads. Some people do it as a balance. They'll find, uh, they'll go after shippers at the same time, going after carriers for those shippers. So the two can kind of meet in the middle. But this is module one, um, customers and shippers. Um, so a few tidbits for you guys. Um, when you first start off in freight brokering and learning the, the workflow and the process of it, um, try to find a niche, a niche in the industry. Um, what I mean is a niche at, as a um, certain equipment type niche, like the three main equipment types that we speak about are the 53 foot dry vans, the 53 foot reefers or refrigerated trailers, and the 48 to 53 foot flatbeds. So that's one niche. So you find one of those niches and you go after that. And then when you find a specific or decide on a specific equipment type that you want to um, concentrate on, then focus on the particular commodities within that equipment type. For example, um, <clears throat> it's been said that flatbeds are the um, easiest entry point as far as an equipment type. So your niche starting out could be going at the flatbed shippers with commodities such as lumber or steel pipes or maybe some military equipment for those flatbeds. So um, within that niche arena too, you want to fir uh, first focus on um, going after shippers that are local to where you live. Um, so if you're in a certain um, geographical location, then you, you do your search um, or use your resources to go after those shippers within your local area, maybe a 50 to 100 mile radius, maybe 25 to 50 mile radius. Go after those shippers, do your research either on your um, online researches or you go locally to the places or email. So, um, so the niche portion is important. You want to start off small um, concentrate on some of the smaller mom and pop companies whose um, gross revenue may be a million dollars or less or you can focus on some of the small to mid-sized corporations or companies whose gross annual revenue may be five million dollars or less you don't want to start off as a beginning freight broker going after the big boys because <clears throat> you want to walk in there and you do not have a book of business, you don't have any experience, um, let alone any level of knowledge of the, the industry yet. So you go to a, a larger company, um, you may or may not be as successful as you anticipate um, because they deal with brokers all the time. They know the lingo and things like that. So um, my suggestion is to start off with the small mom and pops because they, they still move freight. They still have customers that they need to get their freight to. And then also the small to mid-sized companies, they still have customers that they need to get their freight to. So when you're dealing with shippers, of course, you know, shippers want to hear, you know, are you going to are you going to move my freight? Are you going to pick it up on time? Are you going to get it to my customer on time without any damages? And if I call you, are you able to respond? Can I get a hold of you when I call? So these are some of the questions that shippers usually want to know. So um, so that's under the niche. Now, also another tidbit is to, you know, educate yourself. Um, what I mean by educating yourself about the companies that you go after. So when you're doing your research, um, educate yourself 
on the companies that you decide to go after, whether it's the mom and pop companies or the small to mid sized companies based on the level of <clears throat> research that you do. <clears throat> so if you want to go after those companies, begin to educate and learn about the companies, who they are, the equipment types they have, how they haul, what their commodities are for those equipment types. So when you um, finally get a hold of someone in logistics or a shipping manager, you'll be um, better equipped to, to have a conversation with them because you'll know more about the company and what they do. It puts you kind of at an, um, a little bit of an advantage. If you're going in knowing a little bit about the company, uh, the person will look at you and say, okay, he must have done his homework. He, you know, interested in being one of our clients. Um, and then, of course, the other tidbit is um, you want to build relationships with these potential prospects. So as you um, get added to their freight list or you become a client of theirs and moving loads for them, the more you successfully move those loads, then the more they will um, give you an opportunity to move more loads. So say you start off with a small mom and pop or a mid, small to mid sized company and you move five loads a week. And you do that pretty successfully. Your carriers who you got approved under your brokerage, they show up to the shipper on time to pick the load up. They deliver on time with no discrepancies, no damage freight. And then when you, when the shipper calls or you call the shipper to do a um, checkup on the, the status and the ETA of your carriers, everything goes smoothly. So in that relationship building paradigm, as you do that more successfully over and over again, the shipper sees that, then they provide you with more loads to move because you're proving proving that you are able to move their freight from origin to destination in the way that they want. So those are tidbits. You know, find your niche, you know, start off small, find your niche, um, educate yourself about the company once you find that niche with uh, be it the equipment type and the commodity and then build the relationships by successfully moving those loads. Um, so those are the type of shippers. Now, how do you contact the shippers? There are several ways. Um, one of the more popular ways, of course, is doing the cold calls from your resources online, whether you got a purchased shippers list or whether you're looking at some websites that have um, shipper lists that are on there and you drill down and, and um, kind of like specify the type of searches that you do like for example um mcgray's blue book is a popular one thomas net hunter io manta careers in food depending on the commodities that you're going after and the equipment type so um and then of course um if you are local <clears throat> if you're in a local area you can google search for local shippers that are local to you go to your local um chamber of commerce and look up manufacturers or look up shippers and then find those shippers who are within a close proximity, maybe 20 miles or less, or maybe 30 miles or less. You may broaden your search um, 30 miles or less from where you actually live and then go out and visit those sites. Um, go into the offices, speak to the shipping manager or logistics person and see if you can spark up a conversation. Look them in the eye, handshake. It's good to speak to people in person, get to know them one on one. Um, when you do local visits, it's always good not to go empty handed. Um, of course, you want to take your, um, your a copy of your shipper's packet in case um, a logistics manager or shipping person says, yeah, then, you know, let's get set up. Um, maybe some business cards, some flyers, even some ink pens, something as small as an ink pen. If you leave that with them. So, um, so you got cold calls. Is a type of way to contact shippers. You have local visits where you physically go there. Um, word of mouth, you may know someone who knows someone in the shipping industry um, to spread the word and they may be looking for someone to help them move their loads, brokered loads. And then of course you got the email um, blasts as well. You send out emails um, to the different shipping companies and then do your follow-ups as well. Um, the ultimate goal is to be added to their freight list you know, they'll send out an email every morning or every so often. And they're and you're not the only one that they're sending that email to. There's other brokers who are competing with you for that shippers or that customer's freight. So, um, but once you get that customer approved, and of course you add them to your system, you know, either your TMS or your spreadsheet or your database, uh, something that can keep them um, centralized in a location. So when you start moving loads, you can just pull that data up 
and build that load like like for example in the ascend tms if you have um, your customers already entered in it, entered into the system you can build the load and just pull select that customer and it ports that data into the section where the load is being built and then you just continue with that workflow um, also too um, we also mentioned the four R's. Um, I've learned this a, a while back. The four R's of brokering. Of course, the first R is research. You want to look up the companies, get as much information about them um, as you can before calling them. The second R is reaching out. Reaching out, whether it's through cold calling, whether it's through local visits, whether it's through emails, word of mouth. Uh, mouth. You reach out to the company and uh, communicate see if you can get approved as a um, broker to move loads for that company getting set up it's called getting set up the third R is relationship building the relationship uh, relationships are built based off of performance so the more your approved carriers successfully move loads for that customer or shipper then the better that relationship will be and then the fourth R is return now this return means that it coincides or it relates to the relationship portion under the four R's in that the more you build those relationships, the more your carriers move those loads, then you're going to get returned more loads to move. So, you, like I said in the previous example, five loads a week, you're building that relationship, you're doing that successfully and consistently over a three to six month period. The shipper will come to you and say, hey, I have five more. Can you handle that? And of course, you're going to say yes. So now that's a that's a return because now you're getting more you're getting an opportunity to get more business brought your way to your brokerage based off of your previous performance with your approved carriers whom you vetted out and you've successfully approved running those loads for now your approved customer your shipper so now they now they're joined together and the workflow is running smoothly in, in the way that the shipper is saying, okay, you're running my loads, you've been doing them pretty well for three to six months, I'm gonna add another five loads a week to you. So um, that's the process. Um, now it's, it's a lot more inner workings to that, but that's more of a high level overview of getting the customers. When you're first starting off with a, as a brokerage, I'll do a little review here. When you're first starting off as a brokerage, again, you wanna, find a specific niche first. Um, some people go in, they'll just go all over the place. They'll look at, for reefer um, loads. They'll look for dry goods um, and they'll look for flatbed loads and things like that. But if you find a specific niche and you focus and concentrate on that niche and learn that specific niche and the equipment type and the commodity that goes along with that specific niche, that specific area, you build from that and then master that and then move on to the next equipment type. For example, if your niche is flatbed lumber or flatbed steel pipes or whatever, then focus on that, concentrate on that, build that to the point where it's it's automated. And then you can probably move on to maybe drive in um, equipment types and drive in freight and then eventually reefer equipment types and reefer type freight. But just starting off as a small brokerage, it's, it'd be good to um, get involved with, with a specific niche and then focus and concentrate on that. Educate yourself about the, um, the companies that you're going to go after and try to win their business. And then once you win their business, um, build the relationships. So that's module one, understanding how to acquire customers. Um, there's scripts and things to do. Um, to go about when you're talking to people, but um, it's, if you educate yourself more and more about the company, the less likely you're going to need a script to speak to them because you're going to know so much about the company. You just talk about who they are, you know, you know what they haul, you know who they are, you know how they haul it. You just want to understand the lane that they're in from origin to destination and how you can provide a service for them, how you can help them move their freight to where they need it to be moved to on time and with no damages and things like that. And you could be called upon and relied upon whenever they call you for, um, for a need. So again, that's module one, customers and shippers. Um, for those who are interested in joining Freight Broker 101 Training for Beginners, www.exodusdispatchingandtraining.com and then go to the freight broker one-on-one -on -one training at the top of the website click into enroll into there and then go from there um, 
or I can be reached also at area code 757-515-1684. Again, this is module one, customers and shippers. Thank you.